Come on now, tell the story. Now. And I've been through the flood. Well, yeah. and I'm sitting here as I am because of my Lord's blood. Yeah, yeah. Well, he opened up the window of heaven. Yeah. It's your season to be blessed. The song said he opened up the windows of heaven and poured each of us out a blessing. We thank God this morning that he's sovereign. He, he can do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. But Sister Williams just sing, it's our season to be blessed. Are you going through something? Don't you know that the blessing is on the other side of through? We have to go through things every now and then that God might be glorified. We want to say good morning to those in the sanctuary, those of you who are visiting online. We, we thank God for your chiming in. We thank God for your, your blessings and gifts that you sent in through the mail. And those who have been giving on, online, we thank God for you. Amen. But this morning, we want to continue in our, in our series. This year, we've been talking about prayer. I know uh, several Sundays ago, we prayed for the priests of Jerusalem. And then we moved that Paul said his heart and desire to prayer to God that, that somebody might come to know who Jesus is. Somebody might be saved. And then last week, we talked about pray for them, those that, that, that come up against the, the children of God. And, and then now, James, we find ourselves this morning in James Chapter 5. Now, James wants us to, we done looked at Jerusalem. We've looked at the, the unsaved. We looked at the, 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 the one that's reaping havoc in our lives. And, and now, 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 James wants us to look a little bit closer. Amen? Amen. He wants us to look a little bit closer. And today, today's lesson comes out of James chapter 5 and verse number 16. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We thank God for our ushers. We thank God for our media, our musicians, Lord God. We thank God for each and every one of you. Eternal God, our Father, we do embrace your presence yet again. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are in our lives. We pray, Father God, that you would speak for your servant here with Lord God. We pray, Father God, that our minds and our hearts may be open, Lord God, that we may gather wisdom, knowledge, and above all, Father, we continue to pray for your understanding. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We praise you for all things. Block our situations, circumstances, anything that will hinder our hearing, and our speaking, Lord God, that you might cast it away. For it's in Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. James 5, 16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much just for a few moments pray for one another do you pray for other people 
Now, I know we talk about folk. We, we, we talk about the folk in the news. We talk about the folks in the White House, those in Congress. They're a different place. But do we pray for them? James, but he wants us to pray for one another. He, he, he's talking about the brethren now. We, last week, he, he talked about the heathen. Pray for them, those who try to persecute you, those who come up against you, those who are trying to reap havoc in your life. Pray for them. But now he says, pray for one another. But see, James chapter 5 encourages believers to trust and depend on God and not money. See, I don't care how much money you have. Don't you know money can buy you health insurance, but it can't buy you health? It can't buy your health, you know. I mean, money can do some things, but but there's some things that money just can't do. Uh, I, I I realized that over in the book of Acts, when the young man he wanted to buy the Holy Spirit, and uh, you know uh, the, the the word on the street was, you know, your, your purse, your pocketbook, it's going it's going to perish. With there are certain things that money just can't buy. But see, money can cause significant problems. Because the pursuit of riches leads to sin. That's why the Bible teaches us over there in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. It says, for the love of money is the root of all sorts of evil. Uh, see, 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 money make you do some strange things. Yeah, we do, we, we do strange things all in anyway, but, but money makes us do things a little bit more, a little bit more strange. Now, Jane's final analysis is, is that the rich were using their wealth to, for, I mean, to, they were using their wealth for foolish reasoning and they was being selfish and they were persecuting the poor. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know that, 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 that. I'm pretty sure you know some biggest. You you might not be one, but I'm but but I'm pretty sure that you have met someone that that hides behind their money. They think money can get them out of this, that, and the other. But 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 money ain't gonna get nobody out of hell. Amen. But see, James he summed it up by saying that these types of individuals they are viewed as wicked. And their riches will be useless on the last day. Uh, yeah, I know, I know that uh, my wife and I, we were talking the other day and, and um, she don't need anything. I know she don't need anything. When people ask me, what do I need? I say, I need a closer walk with God. But don't you know that money separates? You know, money keeps some folk from worshiping God. They, money keeps some folk from coming to church. They don't have to work on Sunday, but some people choose to because of money. Do y'all remember the young man that um, he, he, he died a few years ago, but uh, one of the things he said that if he ever got his hand on a, on a dollar bill again, he was going to squeeze it to the eagle ring. Uh, I know y'all never heard of Chuck Brown. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry about it. But, but what I'm trying to say is that, that money make us do some strange things. But see, we must focus on our permanent destination. That's God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Not on that which is temporary. The things in which we find here on earth. We talked a little bit about that in Sunday school this morning. You know, how, 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 how things that, how, how we allow stuff to get our focus off of God to do that in which we want to do and start of what, instead of what God desires for us to do. Let, let, let me slow down just a little bit. I'm, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to rush through this, but, but see, in chapter three, James highlighted what Dr. Warren Worsby said, he called the world's smallest but largest troublemaker. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all know what that is, right? It's the tongue. James 3, 5 says, even so the tongue is a little member, but it boasts its great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire a kindle. I know I'm the only one in here that have said something to somebody that they caused them to want to fight. I know. I'm the only one. 
But in our lesson, James desires that, that we will use our tongue in a different way. Instead of tearing somebody down, we ought to be trying to build them up. Uh, that, that's what Paul said to the church at Ephesus. He, he says that, 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 that we ought to be edifying the body, and as we edify the body, we're glorifying God. But see, in chapter 5, James addresses the troubles and the plagues of this society, but, some, but much more, he wants us to concentrate on the believer. In other words, don't let money, don't let our jobs, don't let our, our education, don't let that keep us, you know, pinning somebody else down and trying to lift ourselves up. See, there's a song that, that, that says, it, it says that, you know, if, if the praise team, if, if Sister Manley was here this morning, I believe she would have sung, Trouble in My Way. I have to cry sometimes. See, 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 James, he, he wants us to look more closely because he identifies that, that the troubles that these new converts were experiencing as they were being scattered and persecuted. Don't you know, they were being persecuted because of their faith. And they ran across some bigots, and, and, and the Bible teaches us that, that these folk were, you know, since they had money, you know, you don't know, for, for money, you know, money is power in, in the lives of some folk. They think the money in which they have allows them to do and say anything they want to do and say to anybody else. But see, in verse, in, in, in verse 4, they were, they, they were not being paid for their services. Then we look at verses 13 through 16. Many were physically challenged. And in verses 19 and 20, there was on a spiritual decline. Don't you know that money will take your mind off God? That's why I'm broke. <laughs> See, James, he, he encourages his believers to be patient, his hearers, to, to be patient. Don't quarrel against one another. Do not seek to find fault in one another because the righteous judge is standing at the door. What I'm trying to say is that James, he, he, he desires that, that, that these brethren, they, they were being persecuted. They were being scattered because of their faith. And now they ran across some individuals. And he, want what? he wants us to pray for them. Don't you know that we got to pray for one another? See, I need prayer just like everybody else needs prayer. See, some folks don't think the pastor needs prayer. Some folks think the deacon don't need prayer, but all of us are standing in need of prayer. But see, in James chapter 5, the Bible is teaching you and I that we ought to be praying for somebody else. We talked about Jerusalem. We talked about the unsaved. We, we talked about the persecutors. But, but God wants us to pray for one another. He wants us to pray for other believers. Don't you know that the more we try to do things for God that God has commanded us to do, don't you know that there are more opposition that comes up against us? But it's a shame that, that sometimes it's the folk that walking are supposed to be walking with us. But see... In verse 11 of chapter 5 of James, he says, Behold, we count them happy which endure. See, 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 don't you know that this faith walk that you, we are on, this journey that, that we're on, is not peaches and cream? See, see, if we really look at James' lesson, James, you know, this whole book is talking about endurance. See, he says in verse 11, he says, You have heard of the patience of Job. And have seen the end of the Lord and that the Lord is very pitiful and, and tender of mercy. See, in other words, don't you, you, know, you and I are going to go through some things, but God desires that as we go through that we might pray for one another. See, see the problem is, is that you know, if it's not my issue, I don't have time to pray. But see, 
The Bible tells us that we ought to be praying not, not only for ourselves, but, but we ought to be praying for, for one another. See, Jesus took time to stop and pray for all of us. And if the truth be told, as Paul told that church at Rome, he's sitting on the right hand of God right now making intercessions for us. We don't even know what we ought to be praying for, but Jesus is praying on our behalf, and we ought to be praying on behalf of one another. But see, James' overall theme in his letter and his message is for those who have been persecuted for their faith. If we look at what the Bible is teaching us over there in James chapter 1 in verse 1. It says, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which were scattered. Uh, see, see, they were being persecuted for, for the things of God. You know, you know, I wonder how many folk have we driven out of the church. Uh, you've heard my testimony. Uh, when I get the opportunity to go back to Alabama for our, for our class reunion, and every now and then they ask me to deliver the message, and as I look through it over the congregation, I, I wonder how many are not there because of me. But see, they were being scattered for their faith. But James says in verse number two, he says, he says, my brethren, he said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. You know, in other words, he said that there's some things that's going to come your way, but you ought to take delight in it because God is going to get us through any and every situation that might come our way. But see, in verse number three, he says, knowing this, he said, first thing that we ought to know, he says that what the, the trying of our faith, it worketh patience. See, we ought not be quick, fast, in a, in a hurry to do anything but pray. Don't you know that sometimes prayer is the last thing that you and I might do? When it ought to be the first thing. But as I hasten to a close this morning in verse 4, he says, But let per per patience have her perfect weight, work, that you may be perfect and tired, not wanting nothing. But I love what he says here in verse 5. He said, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth all men liberally, and unbraideth not, and it shall be given him. See, I don't care what you're going through. You can always go to God. See, 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 that, that's why the Bible teaches us that, 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 that you and I ought to be prayer warriors, prayer warriors. It's not that God does not know. God wants us to see if we know that we need him. See, he knows that we need him. But a lot of us don't think that we need him. And you, that's why we, we started this conversation off talking about money, talking about riches. See, see, I don't care how much money a person has, they still need God. But I said all that to say this. G James desires that we use our tongue for something that's beneficial Instead of bickering and blaming. Have you ever complained about somebody else? Yeah, we do it all the time. Do, 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 do we blame somebody else for, for our mistakes? See, see, in Sunday school this morning, see, 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 uh, folk were talking about, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 working two jobs and doing all this, that, and the other. But, but see, the thing of it is, is that if you're chasing the dollar, we doing some stuff that God is not approving of. And see, when we when we fall into those the, the, those life situations, we start blaming God. I, I heard in, in this morning that that sometimes you know people blame God. They want to blame God for the stuff they are going through. But if they get into the Word, the Bible teaches us what to do, what to say, how to do it, when and you know and where. And if we do it God's way. We don't have to worry about all the foolishness that's going on around us. But he said, if you lack wisdom, just ask God. God will teach us everything that we need in order that we might live a life that's pleasing to him. Amen. And don't you know that the Bible says in, 
In Psalm 24, the, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. See, see, God is not interested in what we have. If that be the case, he'd have never gave it to us. But see, James desire that we might pray one for another. See, 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 as these people were being persecuted, I believe they was focusing on the persecutors. But James want us to pray that, you know, for one another, that, that we might gain strength as we being persecuted by the people or the things of this world, that we might be encouraged, that we might endure. See, it's all about enduring. Now, don't you know that, that, that if when we get to heaven, it's going to be because, you know, all of the trials and the tribulations that, that we were faced with here and, and people praying for us and we praying for them and we praying for ourselves. See, that's another problem. See, we got folk that are asked you to pray for them and then we pray for themselves. But see, people say, they come to me and say, Sam, pray for me. I break out in a prayer. They be like, oh, I ain't mean now. If I won't pray with you, there's a good chance that I might not pray for you. See, I'd rather pray with you. And if I pray with you, you ought to understand that I pray for you. But see, the tongue is being used to bring, you know, folk down in, 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 uh, in, you know, in, in, in chapter 3. But see, in chapter 5, you know, James declared, desires rather, that we might what? That the tongue might be used in its highest value. That is to what? That is to lift somebody up. See, we ought to speak God's word. Praying that his will might be done and glorify him. That is the process of prayer. But see, prayer and praise, it takes our minds off of the stuff that's going on around us and puts it on God that we might, that we might be able to endure. I say oftentimes is that, you know, believers go through stuff too long because they focusing on the stuff Instead of focusing on God. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be talked about. People are going to come up against you. you. That comes with the territory. But what God desires is that we might pray for one another. That we might endure whatever the situation that might be facing us on this day. That God is going to get us through to the other side. But see that's the problem. Lord why me? He said, why not you? Until you have faith in me, until you trust me, you know, you know, you know, you know that's what I say. Some folk go through stuff too long because they're focusing on the wrong person. They focus focusing on the wrong thing. But see, I love what Luke said in his gospel. In Luke 21, verse 36, it says, Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. See, see, Luke had it right. He said that, you know, when, 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 when the dust is settled, when, when, when everything is clear, it says that, that as we pray and as we take things to God, God account us worthy of him answering because we seeking somebody that can make a difference in our situation. See, see, I can pray with you, I can pray for you, but I can't make the difference. God is the one that's going to make the difference in each of our lives, but it says here that we shall escape some stuff because we're praying to the one who can get us through it. But see, praying for one another in our lesson, it refers to praying to God, wishing the betterment or the blessing in somebody else's life. See, I think that's one of the problems in the church. I, there's a song that says, you know, uh, what God has for me is for me. See, some folk think what God has for them is for them too. I mean, what I'm saying is that what God has for me, you know, you know they think it's for them too. No, 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 no. That's, that, that the song is letting us know that, that when we seek and search God, you know, with a pure heart, God will answer our prayer. But see, prayer is us having a conversation with God. 
But as we go through life, we must remember each other as we what? As we seek God's will for our lives. It's all about putting somebody else. Did not Jesus say the one that last will be first? And the one that want to get in the first line will be last? See, 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 prayer is, is putting somebody else before you. And when God sees that, he sees that we are following the same pattern in which Jesus did. See, see, when, before Jesus did anything, he always went to the Father to get the Father's okay to do what he was getting ready to do in order to bless somebody else. But see, as I go to my seat, for the second time. See, our prayers must be simple. Simple, yes, ma'am. In other words, uh, we don't have to have them 26 uh, letters of the alphabet in one word. Uh, see, 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 see what I'm trying to say is that, you know, see, 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 God desires that, 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 that we, we make it plain because, because see, we can trip our own selves up with big words. But see, simple implies a degree of intelligence inadequate to cope with anything that's complex or involving mental effort, not socially or culturally sophisticated. That's why Paul told that church, we don't know what we ought to pray. See, you know, going to God sometimes, you know, it could be complex. Because I love what Jesus told his disciples when he was teaching his, his disciples. He said, don't be like the hypocrites. He said, they standing on the streets. They, they're using all these big words and they want people to hear them. He said, don't be like them. See, see, our prayers ought to be simple to where we might, that we might know that God sees our hearts. See, God, he, he sees our hearts. He knows our hearts. But the problem is, is that sometimes we complicate our hearts in the things in which we say, do or think. But see, simple refers to being free from guile or vanity. Don't you know that we can be sometimes go to God in prayer and we forgot what we went to God to pray about? <laughs> because instead of making our prayer simple, it's complex. We're asking God to do something that you know, that, 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 that God would not even do. See, see, some folk will go and pray to ask God to give them something that, 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 that goes against his word. That's complex. But, but, but the, the, the Hebrew, not the Hebrew, but the proverb writer said that's foolishness. But see, simple refers to being free from all the unnecessary things in which we can come up with. In our lesson, simple means not limited or restricted, but readily understood to perform an action. See, the reason why God had to answer some prayers is because some folk don't even know what they prayed. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. See, 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 God knows exactly what you and I need. But when we, when, we, when, we, when we put some complexity on the prayer, God is waiting, okay, now, Sam said I can do this, but he really don't know. And, and so God is not answering my prayers because I'm confused. But see, James says in our scripture lesson today, he said the first thing he says, confess your faults one to another. See, in other words, when we pray, if I'm going to pray with simplicity, if, if I'm going to keep it simple, I need to let folk know that I got issues too. See, see, some folk don't think they have issues. See, see, what James is saying that, that these folks are being persecuted, he wants them to pray for one another. But he says, first of all, confess your faults to one another. See, sometimes, you know, people, you know, view us as that we don't do anything wrong. But I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't do everything right. The Bible teaches us, it, it tells us, Brother Larry, it says that 
thought, word, or deed, we have the opportunity to mess up in three areas each and every day, and I'm not immune to any of it. What I'm trying to say is that we need to let folk know that, you know, I did something, I said something, I thought something, that they might be encouraged to know that we serve a God who is in the business of forgiving. He says, he said, confess your faults one to another. Then he says, pray for one another. See, when I tell you that I'm, I'm, I'm toe up from the floor up, that means that, you know, as you're praying for me, I'm, I'm praying for you. But, but all of us have some type of issue. But he says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Then he says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person, it availeth much. See, simply acknowledging one's imperfection, my own, and testify of God's delivering power should encourage others to believe and trust God, and God would deliver them. In other words, you know, you know, uh, uh, yeah, 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 I know y'all probably never heard of this guy, but, 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 but back in the day, you know, this young man said, you know, I'm bad. There's no man on the line that can beat me. Uh, then that yeah, Mike Tyson. Then, then that was another man that said, ain't nobody bad like me. Uh, Morris Day, I'm just cool. Right? And, and then there was another one there, you know, you know, Michael Jackson. He had a song that said bad, and you know, uh, then the rapper of uh, Ice, not Ice T, what's the rapper uh, um, that that um he, he uh from, from New York. Uh help me out, somebody. But, but he had bad too. He uh he plays on um well let, let me move on. Uh, not Ice T, not Ice Cube. <laughs> no, it's not Ice anybody. He plays on one of these uh, sitcoms out in out in L.A. Well, I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna move on. God, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's out of New York. But but my point is, is that what what I'm trying to say is that 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 all of us have done something bad. And the Bible is teaching you and I, who's that? LL Cool, LL cool J. I know somebody here was listening to rap other than I, but, but what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> what I'm trying to say, all of us, you know, think we bad, but, 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 but don't you know we really are? Because from God's perspective, when we are disobedient, we're bad. But I'm glad y'all got, got LL Cool J because it was, it, was, it, was, it was holding up the progress. But what I'm trying to say that, do we see us operating, you know, selfishly? Or do we take the time and pray for somebody else? See, see in other words, if, if you know that God has delivered me from some foolishness, and you and you doing some foolishness? Guess what? You, you know the Bible is teaching us as we pray for one another, we will realize that God would deliver us because He is no respecter of person. See, Christ is unselfish. He's working on behalf of someone else even right now, and God desires that you and I that we might that we might tell somebody every now and then. You know, you know, I mess up. I do things wrong. I want to get. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. We do it all the time but what I'm trying to say is that we just need to keep it simple all of us are standing in the need of prayer but see our prayers must not only be simple our prayers must be sincere don't you know that God know when we're just going through the motions see, see see that's why some of our prayers are not answered because we're just going through the motions See, sincere, it stresses the absence of hypocrisy. That's why he said, confess your faults one to another. Because it's hypocritical to look down on somebody else when you've done the same thing. So, see, it says that sincerity, you know, it, 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 it speaks of, you know, not being, you know, uh, funny, not, 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 not going around lying on people, not, not exaggerating. You, you, we can exaggerate. I love to do prison ministry. When I go over there to Prince William County, uh, Prince George's County, or Alexandria, sometimes I hear folks, I don't know how I got here. <laughs> I said, you worked hard, whatever it was. 
What I'm trying to say is, is that people love to exaggerate, you know, you know, they, they exaggerate about their circumstances and their situations. And, and see, that's why God had to answer some prayers because, you know, cause, cause some folk are not, they, they're not, they're not, they're not simple in their prayers and then they're not sincere in their prayers. See, sincere, it means to be free of disillusioning. See, we got some folk that are disillusioned. Uh, yeah, ain't nobody bad like me, but uh, but 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 see see see, free from adul adulteration yeah, means to be pure, you know, marked by genuineness. In other words, see, God desires that our prayers be honest. He desires that they might be pure, and we might be speaking the truth. See, you know, God knows exactly what you and I need, but since sincerity, it means to be straightforward. It means to be genuine, stressing, spontaneity, and the absence of pretense. In other words, as Paul says, I am what I am. But don't you know, it's God that's working in each of our lives to will and to do of his good pleasure. And see, that's what we're to be praying, that, that God might have his will and his way in our lives. You know, Do we haphazardly just go through our prayers? Look what he says here in verse number 17. He says, Elias, he was a man subject to like passions. He was no different than you and I. And he said, you know, he, then he said, and he prayed earnestly that it might what that it might not rain. And he said that it did not rain, you know, on the earth for three whole years and six months. For, th for three years and six months, the Bible says that because of Isaiah, uh, uh, Elijah's prayer to God, he held up the rain because he was sincere. He was praying earnestly about the things in which he was seeking God for. And see, that's the problem. A lot of us are going through, we're seeking God for some things, but we're not what we're not being honest with him, nor are we being honest with ourselves and anybody else. And then it says that, you know, in verse 18, it says that, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth fruit. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that when we pray sincerity, you know, with, with sincerity rather, to God. God will what? God will show out and bless you with that in which you have asked of him. And for the last time, I'm getting ready to take my seat. When, don't you know that praying with simplicity and praying with sincerity, don't you know that it guarantees security? Yeah, yeah, see, see, don't you know that you are secure in God? See, that's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning, that, that security, it is the state or quality of being able to readily afford or access what is needed to meet one's basic need. In other words, if we sincere with God, if we simple and you know, if we're simple minded, you know, you know, you're knowing that God has everything under his control, the Bible is teaching you and I that we will, he guarantees us that he's gonna get us through whatever we're going through. See, see, security, it refers to being safe. It means to be free from danger, from free from, from fear and anxiety. See, don't you know that? Anxiety sometimes it overwhelms the believer because they're doing, saying, and doing everything but what God has directed them to do. And today, He wants us to be simple in our prayers. He wants us to be sincere in our prayers. And the Bible says that He will free us up of some stuff. See, security, it refers to measuring or taking a guard to protect. Don't you know that God is protecting us? I told you earlier that God protected me. He saved me from me. And what I'm trying to say that the things that are going going on around us, sometimes they may cause harm, they might sometimes, you know, come up, people might come up against us to do this, that, and the other, but the Bible is teaching you and I, if we follow what God has taught us and what he's teaching us, he says that we might, we might be secure in him. See, security is something that is provided to make certain the fulfillment of an obligation. Don't you know that God has obligated himself to us? You know, it's a shame that we won't obligate our Myself to him. The Bible says that, that God will meet every need and according to his power. You know, I, I love what he said. He said, I promise. That's what Paul told the church at Philippi. He said, I will, he said, I will, you know, give you everything that you need. I, I promise to give you all you need, you know, by my riches in glory 
by, you know, Christ Jesus. We were talking in Sunday school this morning. See, a lot of people want a lot of stuff, you know, and the stuff that they want, they really don't need. He said, I promise to supply your need. That, that's what he told him at, at Philippi. But as I go to my seat this morning, in verse number 15, it says that, look, look, look at what security look like. It says, and the prayer of faith, it shall save the sick. See, see that's security in God. Not only that, it says that it shall save the sick. It says, the Lord shall raise him up. Don't you know that God is working in the lives of the believer because we have been sincere and we keeping it simple. That's what the Bible is teaching you and I this morning. But look what he says here as that scripture continues to unfold. It says that, and if he have committed sin, they had, they shall be forgiven him. What I'm trying to say is that God is working in your life. He's working in my life. If we've done something wrong, if we said something wrong, if we thought something wrong, if we go to God with simplicity and being sincere, the Bible says that we're secure in him. He says that if you committed a sin, it shall be forgiven. But I love what he says here in verse number 20. It says, let him know that he which, co who, which, he which converted the sinner from the error of his way and shall save a soul from death, he shall hide a multitude of sin. What I'm trying to say is that there is security in Jesus Christ. And all we have to do, the Bible says, you, have you ever heard that song? You know, you know, because, you know, uh, well, uh, the, 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 the hymn 340, uh, what a friend we have in Jesus. It says that, you know, you know, we go through all of this stuff because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. See, that's the problem. That's the issue. Many of us want God to work in our lives, but we, we thank God, God, you know, just go, you know, just go. Yeah, he bless, he blesses us. Don't get me wrong. But every now and then, God wants us to understand that we need him. He don't need us. You can ask Job. Uh, he don't need us. He said, he asked Job, Job, he, where were you when I, when I spoke all of this into existence? What I'm trying to say is, is that God desires to work a work in each of our lives. All we have to do is keep it simple. That's all we have to do. Keep it simple and be sincere and you can reap the benefits of God because there is security in God. And all God desires is that we might pray for one another. Believers, we're going through. All of us are going through. Those of you online, you might be going through. But you don't have to use, go to God with big words. You don't have to, you know, go trying to shuck and jive. Just be sincere. If you call it out. if you be, See, being sincere is that we are being honest with ourselves. Before we can be honest with God, we got to be honest with ourselves. That's what James is teaching us. That if I'm honest with me, knowing that I have problems, I have issues. I can go to God on behalf of somebody else because I'm not looking down on them. I'm not looking over them. I'm right there with them. There might be someone on, on, online this morning. Somebody might want to walk with God. Somebody that might want to give their life to Jesus Christ. Somebody that might want to join the church. Irregardless of what it is, the Bible is teaching you and I that Jesus Christ, he loved the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Because Jesus Christ came not into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And I love what he says over there in John chapter 3 and verse 18. He says that the ones who have what? Who has accepted him, they are already saved. But he says that the one who haven't and the ones who won't, they condemned Already, the Bible says we confess with our mouth, believe that which is in our heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died and God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's just that simple. If we just that simple and we just that sincere, he says that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And James just wants us to know that we got to continue to pray for one another. Contact us at newunionbc.org. We'll talk to you about what it means to be a witness. We'll talk to you what it means to walk with God. 
And we'll talk to you what it means to worship. But God wants you and I to be simple, that we might be sincere, knowing that we are indeed secure in Him. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. Well, Oh, mm-hmm.